Hey guys, remember when I said I wished some creationists would tackle the argument that humans are not perfectly designed? Well, I found a video that addresses that argument, and it's from Darwinian Delusions, a channel I've responded to before. There's nothing better than to spend your time here this weekend and listen to me ramble on about creationist arguments. We all know you have nothing better to do. A very common objection against the existence of God is the idea of bad design. For those of you who don't know what this argument is, I don't know how you could not know at this point, is that the human body, or really anything else in nature, is not perfectly designed, which is something you would expect from an all-knowing creator. I personally like to draw examples from the human body because then creationists can't go like, eh, those things are just penguins, God wouldn't care enough to give them wings that actually work. But us humans are a different story because apparently we're just that special. Anyway, here are some examples off the top of my head for flaws of the human body. The immune system attacking our own cells, also called autoimmunity, is one of the best arguments. Explain to me why God would design a defense system that could destroy its own territory. That just makes absolutely no sense to me. And there are plenty of other examples too. Wisdom teeth. Why do those little things have to be there and mess up my teeth? Oh, what about a backwards retina? It'd be nice if our retinas were facing the right way so, <laughs> you know, we could actually see better. I don't know, just a thought. These are all obvious flaws of the human body that God could have easily avoided, especially since he is supposedly all-knowing. Like, we ourselves most definitely aren't all-knowing, and yet we can apparently point out these flaws that God has missed. Now, this is one of these arguments which is very easy to dismantle. Now, the problem with the argument from bad design is it's not purely a scientific argument. It is actually, fundamentally, it's a philosophical argument, but it's mixing oil and water. It's mixing bad science with bad um, theology. Well, for those things I pointed out, how's that not a sound scientific argument? The immune system attacking itself is a serious type of illness that affects many people around the world. It's killing people, and that's not good. I mean, where's the philosophy in it? That the human body killing itself is not good? Doesn't take a lot of philosophical thought to come to that conclusion now, does it? So, here's how the argument goes. We have something in nature, say, women who are barren, and therefore they cannot pass on their genes, this is clearly bad design. Actually, that's not the argument. I mean, it's possible that some atheist out there has said something along those lines, but this is different than what I've heard being thrown around. The argument isn't pointing out a specific individual or a group of individuals and say that they have flaws compared to the general population. Sure, if a woman is barren and cannot have kids, that is a flaw, but you cannot say that that reflects the human species as a whole. So that would be more so a flaw with that woman's body specifically and not the human body. Of course, that would also depend on what specific example you're using. It's a slightly different story if the woman is barren due to genetic reasons than if it were due to environmental reasons. Either way, that's not the argument, but we'll tickle your pickle a bit. Now, from the Darwinian paradigm that we are here to survive and reproduce and our traits are there to facilitate that, whether whatever level of uh, understanding of, uh, whatever level of trait we're speaking about, whether it's biochemical or, um, you know, anatomical. So everything really should be optimum, of course, I'm not saying they all believe, because we believe in constraints, obviously, but ideally, um, we shouldn't have things like women being barren. Well, no. Evolution in the theory of natural selection just states that individuals with traits more suitable for survival and reproduction tend to pass down their genes. In a general sense, this does give us organisms that appear to be well designed for their specific environment. Phenotypes are fleshed out over time, but that doesn't mean flaws don't happen. It takes time to weed out negative traits. For example, members of a population who have a fatal genetic disorder eventually cannot pass on that gene anymore and it gets weeded out. But it takes time, because you would need every individual with that trait to die out before passing that gene on. And there's always something new that comes up, especially since that environment is always changing and species adapt to fit into that changing environment. Or perhaps if a negative trait is not that detrimental, it can really live to stay for a long time. So having these quote, bad designs is not against evolutionary theory, but it is against intelligent design, because that idea suggests that the human body should be perfect. So if that's the case, then clearly from their perspective, they think this is bad design. Now, the problem with that idea is that there is background assumptions involved. And these background assumptions are not of a scientific nature, they're of a philosophical nature. So let me explain that in terms of an example. Yeah, I guess people dying isn't bad, but rather it's an argument from philosophical thought. Wonderful. I mean, nothing is objectively good or bad, but you would assume that a god who has created the universe and everything just for humans would at least design the body to be good for that human being. Say there's two people walking past a building. They walk past this, they're on holiday in Greece, say, and they walk past one of these old buildings, built by the Greeks, and one person walks past and says, this is bad design because, you know, the foundations are starting to sink, and, you know, uh, maybe this beam, uh, if it was made stronger, it would have lasted longer, and so on and so forth. This is bad design. 
His friend next to him says, actually, no, I think this is good design. And they're arguing. Now, obviously, there's some background assumptions involved in both of their paradigms. So one may assume that this building that we're walking past, this was designed to last 500 years, and we're walking past after, say, 400 years, and the building's already starting to show that it's crumbling, so it's not good design. His other friend may assume this building was only designed for 500 years, and we're walking past after 2,000 years, so clearly it's, you know, it's, 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 it's fit for purpose, it did what it's supposed to do, and afterwards it's crumbling, so what? It's still good design because it's fit for purpose. So the background assumptions of these two people will dictate the way they look at the evidence. Okay, I'm going to play ball with your straw man of what atheists are saying in terms of bad design, just for the sake of argument. When people say bad or good, there's obviously some subjectivity to it. Nothing is objectively good and nothing is objectively bad. But what you can do is compare it to what you would expect, which could be perhaps the average or the norm maybe. If a building of that type lasts for much shorter than the average building, then it's bad design in comparison to other designs. Just like how if a woman is unable to have kids, especially if it's due to her body or her genetics, then it's bad compared to what you would expect to be a common function of the human body. Of course, that also depends on how you define good or bad, but that's not even the common argument. If you take a look at the ones I proposed, autoimmunity, wisdom teeth, and a backwards retina, you can't say that assumptions were made to reach that conclusion, when something like autoimmunity is just bad for humans, unless it's specifically killing evil people or something. If you think otherwise, I'd love to hear your justifications on what types of assumptions I'm making. Now, when Darwinists say this is bad design. They're obviously, in terms of a woman being barren, they're obviously referring to the fact that from their perspective, everything should be for their, uh, to facilitate our fitness for uh, survival and reproduction. So a woman not being able to give children is obviously the exact opposite of what uh, they would, from a natural selection point of view, view as good design. Well, it doesn't have to be from a natural selection point of view. If a woman is barren, that is taking away a choice for her to have children. Maybe she wasn't going to have children anyway, but the idea is that it takes away a choice. Now, I don't like your example because some women may actually want to be barren. Maybe some women don't want kids anyway, and this would be an excuse to not use contraceptives, which is why I like my examples more. Maybe some people do, for some reason, want to die from autoimmunity, but can you say that that trait isn't bad just because that small probability exists? I think at this point you're making it more philosophical than it actually is. We need to measure things in terms of human values, because God created everything just for us. Anyway, I have yet to hear your explanation on how interpretation of a woman being barren is based off assumptions. Now, from a Quranic perspective, God says in the Quran that whoever he wills, he gives males, whoever he wills, he gives females, whoever he wills, he gives males and females in terms of children, whoever he wills, he makes barren. So from a Quranic paradigm, we're not here for a cosmic party. We're not here to boogie. We're not here to live our lives, be completely happy, live forever, live young, have no problems whatsoever, always be in a constant state of bliss. That's actually paradise. That's not actually life on earth. Kind of a dick move for him to be the one making the choice on whether or not he could have children. What reason would he have to deny some people and not others? Not to mention that due to the advancement of medicine, we are able to make infertile women pregnant via in vitro fertilization. I guess God didn't think of that when he tried to stop certain women from having kids. But anyway, how does your explanation work for my example, such as autoimmune diseases killing your own body? Did God just want certain people to die then? Your argument essentially boils down to, we don't know God's intention, therefore we can't criticize his design. But that point gets us nowhere, you're stifling a discussion. Countering a point by saying that God works in mysterious ways is not a counter-argument. So God tells us in the Quran that he is going to test us with good and evil. Good and evil is part and parcel of this life. Suffering is actually just the way that things are. And in Islam, we throughout our lives, we're going to be going through suffering in terms of wealth, health, a whole range of things. Yeah, but wouldn't it be more fair if everyone started off equally in terms of suffering? Some people, when they are born, get type 1 diabetes due to genetic reasons, which is a possible result from autoimmunity. Why does God decide to give them more suffering than other people? So, if somebody is going to use the argument from bad design, they can't just point at something and say, okay, that's bad design. They have to explain why they believe that is bad design by being clear about their actual background 
assumptions. Again, I think it's only worthwhile to determine good or bad based on human values here. Sure, you could say that God killing off people by giving them a critical flaw in their physiology is possibly good design because God might have intended to kill those people, but that seems like such a stretch, especially if you believe that free will exists. God created the universe for us, obviously, so why not make suffering a consequence of our own actions? Otherwise, this is not a universe that centers around humans. If you actually believe that he created suffering for the sake of suffering, then you'd also by the same logic be against medical advancement, such as in vitro fertilization. The story you are giving me just seems seems very inconsistent, especially with God's other values. You know, the simplest explanation is usually correct, and if you're presenting all these wild justifications that don't seem likely at all while also redefining God's values to suit your position, then I think we know how much water it holds. This discussion overall isn't going to go anywhere unless we talk about it in human standards anyway, so we'll end it right here. Thank you to everyone who watched until the end of the video. Biggest of shoutouts to Fireshard for his loyal support to this channel. I'll see you guys in the next one.